15 inches. Almost two inches, right? It's 150 point, 72 points in one inch, so be close to two inches in height. All right, let's zoom along here then too. Next definition we have, it's actually sort of two, are uppercase and lowercase. Now you probably have an idea of what these are. Uh, of the two letters that are here, the letter T or the letter Y, which one is uppercase and which one is lowercase? Yeah, and the lowercase would be the Y, right? Sometimes you call the uppercase letters capital letters, okay, or lowercase letters. So to help us because we need a bit more scientific uh, description than the bigger letters or the smaller letters. Let's add in a few labels to these lines and that'll help us out. So I'm going to pick up the type tool. We call this line along the bottom, this dashed line that's on the bottom, is called the baseline. So the baseline is sort of the origin point, the, the point from which all of the uh, letters are based upon. Uh, up from the baseline, we've got the more middle section here. What do you call the middle section of your body? Waist. Waist. Good. The waistline. Lots of people are watching their waistline, especially at this time of year. And what do you have, what do you wear on the top of your head? Hat. Yeah? What's an old school word for hat? Cap. Cap. So this is the cap line. All right? because it's on the top. So now that we know what these three lines are called, it makes it a little bit easier here to make up a good definition. So the uppercase, these are letters that extend from the baseline to where? Yeah. yeah. So baseline to cap line are considered uppercase. The lowercase letters are letters that extend, I'll just copy and paste this down. Letters extend to the baseline to the waistline. So that gives us a definition so that we know what we mean when we're talking about uppercase and lowercase. That doesn't actually give you a description of why we call it uppercase and lowercase. You don't need to know this for uh, the exam or a test. This just kind of as a little aside. The term uppercase and lowercase come from the days of uh, movable type. If you remember, type uh, before we worked with it on computers was in a physical form. So each individual letter would be its own piece. Yeah. Um, remember you said that the uppercase is letters that extend from the baseline to the cap line? Yeah. But some letters like L or T or something like that, can they extend? Yes. Good. Yeah, good point. Um, if you take a graphics class, say in grade 11, next year with Mr. Mildazy, they, they break it up even further. So they talk about uh, letters like the letter F, for instance, which looks like a lowercase letter, but it extends up. They actually call this part uh, an ascender because it ascends up over the waistline, up to the cap line. Uh, likewise, they'll call letters like Y and P uh, descenders because they have letters that descend below the baseline. So it gets broken up even further than that. Um, the uppercase and lowercase, again, come from this idea of movable type. So before we had computers for doing type, each letter would have been either chiseled onto a little piece of stone or later on then formed into a piece of metal. And each individual letter, you would pick up an individual letter, okay, and they were often stored in these sort of little wooden trays. You'd pick up an individual letter, so this little spot on the tray might all be uh, lowercase letter A's, okay? and you'd pick up individual letters and you'd stack them next to each other to make a word, and then from words you would make full lines of type. So it was movable type. You stacked it up. Well, you can imagine how many pieces of movable type you would have in a printing shop. A printing shop might have thousands of these little characters around. right? So to keep them organized, they put them in these wooden trays. 
And then they put the wooden trays into something called a California job case. California job case looks like this. Basically, they took all of those trays with the, uh, with the type in it and they put it into a, a giant cabinet, a box. And in order to make it standardized so that if you move from one printing shop to another, in order to help standardize it so that you could quickly find the, the letters you're looking for, the type you needed, where in this case do you suppose they put the letters that went from the baseline to the cap line? Would they have been in the upper part of the case or the lower part? Upper part, right? Upper case letters. That's where the term comes from. The drawers in the lower part of the case would have had all of the letters that just went from the baseline up to the waistline, right? Upper case, lower case. It's just interesting somehow that we end up using terms that, you know, have their origins from way back in the past, but yet here in 2012, we're still using them today, uh, working on a computer. All right, so that was uppercase, lowercase. We don't have too many more to go. The next one is actually a serif. I'll circle a serif on here so you can see it. I'll grab the ellipse tool, and I'll make a, a red... Whoops, that's my type. Just make a quick circle here. So a serif, oops, I got an extra one. Serif is this little item right here. Okay, that little decorative sort of feature that's on the bottom of the letter T is a serif. And it's one of the feature characteristics of uh, some fonts. Some fonts include those serifs, uh, some don't, but it's this decorative element. Okay, whoops, not frowned. <laughs> Found on the font. You might be frowning if you don't like them. Now, uh, all of you all of you have taken uh, French, so you should be able to tell me what the word sans mean. What does sans mean? Without. So if a font is sans serif, that means it is without serifs. Let's give a couple of examples here. An example of a serif font would be times. An example of... Uh, a sans serif font would be something like Arial. Those are two fonts you've probably used before. This is actually an exam question that pops up in your exam. I'll show you a little uh, piece of type on the exam, and I'll ask you to identify if it's serif or sans serif. It's one of the main ways to use to classify type. Let me scroll up a bit. Okay. We can broadly describe fonts as being either serif or sans serif. There's other classifications, too. We'll learn about scripted type. Uh, scripted fonts, we'll learn about decorative fonts, but sans serif versus serif is a main distinction. Serif typefaces tend to be more old school looking. They tend to be uh, more conservative looking, uh, something from the past a bit more. A sans serif typeface is cleaner, it's more modern looking. Okay, If you were creating a word mark for an, uh, a downtown urban clothing brand, you probably go with more of a sans serif typeface because it's cleaner, more modern looking. Right? If it was uh, a high-end uh, men's uh, clothier that makes custom handmade suits and they've been making them for generations, you probably have more of a serif typeface okay, for something like that. All right, we're almost done. We've just got uh, uh, one or two more definitions to add here too, I think. Kerning is one. Kerning, quite simply, is the space between letters. Okay. So I'm just going to type out the word kerning here, and I'll leave it in standard kerning, meaning I'm not going to adjust it. Illustrator is tracking it automatically. But I'll go ahead and paste in another version of the word kerning, and this time I'm going to increase the kerning quite a bit. So to do that, I'm going to highlight the type, 
and I'm going to click on the character menu just up here. And from the character menu, there's several different options. Here I can adjust the size or the height of the type. Here I can adjust uh, spacing in between, but here I can adjust spacing in between the actual letters. So if I increase this from the standard zero to say 200, now we'll see that the words or the letters in the word kerning are spread out much further. You're going to end up using this kerning adjustment when you start to fine tune your word mark. Most word marks you want to be quite compact, quite uh, almost to look like a complete unit, like you could just peel it off the page, sort of. <clears throat> so we don't want to have a lot of extra space, generally, in your word mark. You want it compact. So you may end up making adjustments to the kerning on your word mark, reducing the kerning to bring the letters actually a bit closer together. If they get too close, they'll overlap each other. It can be hard to read. But uh, if your word mark comes out looking a bit like this, you may want to compact it down a bit more. Likewise, we can adjust not only the space between letters, but we can also adjust something called letting, often uh, mispronounced as leading, but it's letting. I've got to readjust my kerning now because that's too big. I'll go back to zero. So the letting is quite simply the uh, space between lines of type. And you may have thought of this in the past, or it was described as single-spaced lines or double-spaced lines. Maybe you're making an English essay and they ask for, you know, we want double-spaced type. They're talking about letting, technically. Final little aside, the term letting, if I go back here, we were looking at the movable type a moment ago. The term letting comes from the idea of, uh, you can imagine, say in a picture here where we've got individual words, each word is made up of each of these little pieces of type all in one line, okay, and then you'd move to the next line and you'd stack up more letters. Well, if you wanted to push these lines of characters further apart, what they would do is they would add in a long, thin strip of lead kind of like a ruler, a long thin strip, like a ruler of lead, and they would put that in between the lines of type, physically put it in between there, and that would physically push the line of type further apart. So that's where the term uh, letting comes from. Another one of those examples where some old archaic term from the past, but we're still, uh, we're still using it today. So you want to recreate this sheet uh, on your own. Uh, save it as a, a PDF file and then include it with your, uh, with your project. Knowing some of these terms and definitions and stuff will help you uh, uh, create your word mark better, help you be able to work with type.